Welcome back to the Ollie Skelton Show that everybody rates. We are behind a green screen. I haven't decided what's up here right now. So what you're seeing was made in post-production. Um, all thanks to the beauty of the beautiful company, Forensic Audio Mastering. I'm here in WA. That is why we're at a different studio. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I'm seeing, well, I've seen my buddies, my pals, my family, and um, no, it's been great. Tani's here. She's just, well, Tani was here. She's just left. Um, and, you know, I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. I thought that Sydney would be more dangerous than Perth. I have not forgotten the uh, amount of uh, uh, people um, that live in Perth. And, um, you know, kudos to them. They're doing their thing. Uh, but... I don't feel like I can walk the streets at 11.30 p.m. Uh, and I do in Darlinghurst. What does that mean? I don't know. But yeah, uh, the other thing is Perth has an amazing train line from a visual aspect. From afar, it looks like a really good place. And then, you know, you step into the train line. I'm from Midland, so I arguably has, have the worst train line. You know, toss that up with Armadale. Uh, but yeah, it's not the best. It's not the best. Um, and for some reason, I feel incredibly calm, incredibly at peace at the lovely world that is Sydney. So that's a little footnote for you. Um, am I trying, I feel like I'm trying to advertise Perth to Tani at the moment and I'm not doing a good job. We're right in the central of Northbridge. And for people that are Perthians, Perthians, um, they know that's probably not the best way to advertise. The other crazy thing about this thing is I can see myself on the screen and that's, that's tripping me out um, a, a little bit, a little bit. But um, no, yeah, we got uh, a great episode. Uh, we have a great episode today. Um, Bronte Schofield uh, joins the podcast. Bronte Schofield, uh, she's obviously from the Perth world herself. I don't even know if we've hung out when she's been in Perth. Um, but no, I'm super excited to have her on. We've got a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about. Um, and yeah, she's just, I've always felt with Bronte, like she's just an incredibly cool chick. Um, she always gives like a really warm energy. And I think that works well for the Tosser podcast. Uh, we obviously do a segment every week on this show called, and I say it. So you give me something to say, and you better believe that I'm going to say it. This speaks to everybody out there not getting what they want from the relationship. They don't get what they want from the relationship. And I'm going to say it. It's one sentence and you need to hear it. Trust me, if you're listening to this right now, I know you're questioning as to whether or not this dude is a dude for you. This girl is a girl for you. So I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it brief. This is Ollie's and I say it for the week. If he wanted to, he would. I know who you're thinking of right now. That dude, that female, if he forward slash she wanted to, he would. He would talk to you when you're not drunk. He would take you out to dinner. She would let you meet your family. So for the end, I say it of the week. If he, she wanted to, she would do with that what you will. As I mentioned, we have Bronte Schofield. I've told her to knock on the door at 6.40. It's now 6.40, so we're going to introduce her in a second. Super excited. She's from MAF Season 10. Her sister might be on Love Island. We'll figure it out. Welcome back to the Ollie Skelton Show that everybody rates. The acronym for that is TOSA. Now, if you are watching the show on YouTube, um, you needn't know who is the guest. Well, actually, if you've listened on Spotify as well, you've probably seen the title. We've got none other than Bronte Schofield. And I was just saying, we, we haven't actually seen each other in our hometowns before. Never. No. And that actually makes me really sad. <laughs> it is sad. But we're from two completely... We are. We're from, from two completely different worlds. I am a uh, Midland boy. So your girl here. <laughs> your girl here is a scar. Yeah. But, but did you, do you go to hippie occasionally? I used to go to hippie. 
every single weekend when I was in my early 20s. Bizarre that we never ran into it's each other. wild. Yeah. I don't understand no. that. It's like when you said on the show, you're like, oh, I'm from Perth. And I was like, yeah. sorry. Like, hey. <laughs> yeah, it's, isn't it funny? Because yeah, Perth's so small, but it's so big. Yes. Yeah. But like, I feel like when it's north and south, it's like battle. A hundred percent. Two different worlds. So Bronte Schofield's here, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming along, Bronte. Um, and we you. and look, we do something uh, with our guests every week. And we want to know, we want to know, is there a TikTok rabbit hole that you're going down? Is there a TikTok rabbit hole that you're going down currently? I feel like there's always TikTok rabbit holes that I'm going down. I sit there yeah. for hours yeah. and I'm on bloody TikTok. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's eight o'clock yeah. at night. Then out of nowhere, I'm like, it's one o'clock in the morning. I know. <laughs> but I have this thing where the algorithms picked up that I really love to, the lo- I love the paranormal pretty much. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like all I do is I just scroll and I'm like, it's all about skinwalkers and oh. the nun. And I'm like, yeah, bro, skinwalkers are real. Okay, so skinwalkers are those big th- people? They're, yeah, they're like the... They're massive. They basically, what they do is they can make themselves out to look however they want. Oh. Yeah. So like if you're in the bush, this is why I don't, I do not go camping. Okay, fair. I'd never go hiking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This mine's the skinwalkers. Okay, so I'm looking up skinwalker. Oh, God. But now I'm looking at a dog and I'm like, you a dog or you a skinwalker? <laughs> oh, so skinwalkers <laughs> can completely just tra- change it's their... Anything. Right. So like usually Maybe it's I think I've got it wrong. Yeah, mm. usually it's an animal. Right. Mm-hmm. So is that like, um? do you remember the show growing up, Mesomorph or something? Menomore, where they used to Actually, like. Actually, I think I know. What you're I remember there were about. books, and you'd see the books, yes. and you could and you could wave them, and then they'd morph into the thing. Yes, I do remember this. Wow, we're going, we're going way back. This is making me feel old. I know, crazy. Really right? old. I'm like, kids. The kids just don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> no, they're not with it. They're not with it. So obviously, um, we became buds through the beauty that is maths. Mm. Um, now, Channel Nine, they have affiliate shows. They have affiliate shows that um, host a whole lot of content. And this one, and the show I'm talking about, Love Island, right? Oh. Lo- Love Island. Now, show. now mm. I've heard rumours. Mm. I've heard rumours. We love a rumour. Yeah. <laughs> that, um, uh, that Kira, your sister, potentially may be on. Now, what's, how are you going with an NDA there? You signed anything? I mean, I have. <laughs> <laughs> signed anything i mean a, a few of the cast members have and i'm yeah. sure that that's how it got out yeah, but yeah. yes yes the legend kira is coming on the island. wow yeah holy so, smokes so obviously i can't say too much <laughs> like, can, you know, can, are you even allowed to say that she's going on mate it's already out there so they can't get me can they okay. i'm like oh well oh, true true she true was true the first her and abby so old mates Secret girlfriend right. is also on there. Okay, yeah. so they're really just like we want to leverage from ed- from the oh. previous previous season. That's, Absolutely, that's pretty cool. Um, so we're confirming that the rumors are true. The rumors are very true. And the other thing, you like, she was holding your hand through the process quite a bit. Look, <sighs> Kira's like my little anchor. Mm. You know, like she weighs like it weighs me down in a good way. She keeps me grounded. Love it. And it's hard when your sister is your best friend yeah. and I go to her for everything. Mm-hmm. So I think everybody was like, oh, Bronte made up her mind because of her sister. And I was like, no, mm-hmm. I just needed confirmation that I wasn't going batshit crazy. Right. And she literally called it for what it was. Right. So I think in that moment I was like, all I needed was that, I'm, one, I'm not insane. And two, I was like, I can't bring somebody into my life that my sister doesn't like. Of course. It's, yeah, it's, it's, if you don't have the validation from your friends and your family, it is an uphill battle. Totally. It's an uphill battle. A hundred percent. Now, what advice have you given her? What are some do's that you say you got to run with that? And what are some don'ts that you've said, I did that and you shouldn't do that? I think the biggest thing was, I got told by so many people, by so many people, I mean two, <laughs> that don't trust, and I mean this so respectfully, but do not trust production. Right. Because they, we know they're mm-hmm. going to ask you questions in ways in the hopes that you answer in a specific way to suit a storyline. Yeah. Now, 
much like myself, Kira was like, oh, wow, my producer's so nice. She's so lovely. And I was like, yeah, they all are, mate. They've got a job to do. So for me, I was like, just trust your gut. It's probably the biggest thing because I, my gut was screaming at me half the time. And Mm. I just, when you're in that environment, you don't know what's real, what's not. It's hard to kind of decipher. And I just said, when your gut tells you something's off, you need to believe it. I always found with the math producers is that, and I look back at this and I was like, they had me round their thumb is whenever you're, whenever you're saying something, they would be like, "Ah, in the background. "Ah." That's great. Like just think for the people that aren't aware, they are standing to the left of, or the right, depending on the angle that they want of the Mm. camera and they're reacting to what you're saying, which is a lot of the reason as to why people get stuck in these situations because, you know, when you're around your friends and somebody is egging you on a little bit, they're like, yeah, that's funny. (laughs) Or "Ah, I was like watching this when I was, when I was doing my boxes, I was like, I don't think I've ever been funnier. Like (laughs) these people think I am the funniest thing. And And then you just keep going and going. and (laughs) And my ego in me is like, Got them right where I want them. But the, so <laughs> the reality of it is that these guys are just like, excellent. Yeah. Like they, they're like, we've got some <laughs> shit right here. Um, oh, um, so so d- good. So, and, and what about yourself? What about yourself? Mm. Would, if, would you ever consider going on Love Island? Oh, one, I'm too old to go on Love Island. Who says? I mean, have you seen the age? It's like Kira was the oldest and at the time she was 25. Really? Yeah. So they were all really young. And for me, it's, you know, I'm 30 in a month. Really? Yeah. Jeez, you're drinking out of the fountain of youth. The big three, I thank you so much, you know. I'll take that. Okay, but let's say that. Let's say they've, I've seen people 30 on that show, no? Really? No, I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I think I remember seeing somebody that was 27 back in the day and me yeah. like, yes. they're the old person of the group. Right? Yeah. And that's what I mean. Everyone's like, oh, bro, you're not that old. And they think, everyone thinks I'm 26 and I'm like, I'll, I'll take it, but no. Okay. I need to say something with when you and Harrison were together, which always just like frustrated me so much. Old mate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. Go. Sorry. Old mate. Yep. Was you, I hated that you guys would refer to each other as your husband and your wife. <laughs> and I know that that is, I know that the audience knows that, but when I was watching it, I, when I was there, I was like, I, Dani is not my wife in any way, <laughs> shape or form. And, and I, di- was that a, a decision or did you just start throwing it out and you're like, I'm running with it? No, what I really think, you know, I actually never really noticed that we did that. And I think now that I look back on it, it was Harrison's way of trying to, again, right. I, coercively control me into acting in a certain way. Right. So you're my wife. And it's like well, the way that he always said it was like a property. Yeah. Yeah. So like it was like he was trying to play the husband card too much and kind of forget, like forgetting that it's not. We're not binded for life, dude. Yeah. No, don't relax. Yeah. I always said breaks. to I always said to everyone. That's so funny. I never really know. Did I do it? All the time. Did I do it all, all the time? time? Did I? Yes, 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 yes. Really? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually did. And I'd, yeah, I'd be like. Never and noticed. it wasn't just it wasn't just on the couch. It was like. All the time. Like at the dinner party or something. Maybe not near the end there where things were tough, but like wow. for a while there. And I was like, I was like, I don't think I could ever actually call Tani my, Tani my wife Hi. during during that show i mean potentially who knows down the line but um during that time period i actually haven't told you this but well i haven't told anybody this but i lost you know so we're all just to let everybody know with a bit of context we are all on do you remember what level it was nine oh was it nine it was nine. Oh my god yeah how okay. could i forget yeah okay so we were on le- out of my apartment <laughs> <many times. laughs> so we were on level nine right and there's a bin shoot and I want everybody to know sometimes the bin shoot didn't work Mm. and quite consistently the bin shoot didn't work and there would be stacks and stacks of rubbish and you would walk to the producer's room and you were just copping this waff. Yeah, I do remember that. on one of the few times it was working, I was shaking. How hard was it to get (laughs) rubbish in that shoot as well? (laughs) It was so small. Dude, you're like freaking... (laughs) 
like, so small. You're trying to just put it all in there. You're playing this dumb Jenga game. <laughs> and one time, I'm, and you know, it was really satisfying at the end when you would shake it. And it and would it just would like, go down. Oh, yes. So good. So one time I'm shaking it. I lost the ring. <gasps> I lost the ring. And I haven't told this before. What? I never knew this. And the ring is like a thousand bucks. Yeah. For, like I know the, like, do you know what yours was? I think like three. Yeah. That's what they're like. It, it was like a thousand bucks. What? I shook it down the chute. It goes. And then, for, and this was about September and we filmed for another two months. I had a $10 LaVisa one. <laughs> and what? I never what, noticed. One time I took it off and it was green. Like from oh. the. From <laughs> was Tani mad? Was she mad? Yes, yes. yes. And um, I'm not sure if you remember. I know you had a lot of shit going on during this night, but the the when butt. Did I? Have yeah, a lot the of shit the butt. The, the butt gate scandal, right? So we all. Oh, the butt dial. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, butt yeah, dial. Yeah. So uh, when yeah. we all went out that night, um, oh. I I genuinely forgot to take my ring and I left it there, and Tani was like. How dare you? And I was like, fair, to be honest. But once again, in my mind, I wasn't married. So I was just like. Well, you got the, the green mark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, so That's so true. Counts for something. Yeah. <laughs> but um, do you think that in, were you at fault at all in the relationship with Harrison? And do you have anything that you regret? Look, I don't believe in regrets because regrets, you know, they can teach you something. I believe in like everybody that comes into your life is either a blessing or a lesson. And Harrison was both. He was like a blessing, right? (laughs) So there was so much that I learnt from my relationship with Harrison. And at the end of the day, I'm kind of grateful that it did happen because we bought out the worst in each other. Right. And of course, I'm going to not sit here and blame everything on him. Yeah. I had a lot of insecurities myself. Right. I wanted to be loved so badly that I projected my insecurities onto him in more ways than one. Yeah. I'm never going to sit here and say that it's all Harrison's fault. Right. I've never actually done that. Yeah. Never. But at the end of the day, I have worked on myself for years to be the best version of myself. And I entered that experiment, the most healed version of Bronte. Right. And then when I met him... It's like there was all these little triggered moments that I figured, you know what? I'm not healed yet. Right. And since leaving the experiment, I have worked on all those little insecurities. And, you know, it's, I feel like if you can sit back and observe a relationship, not like everybody can, we can watch hours on TV. Yeah. Snippets of it. Yeah. Right. For me, I've gone, I need to work on this. I need to work on that. I've I've gone and done that. But I'm not going to sit here and say that I regret anything because... Because I don't. Right. I love that. But it's, we've all got a little bit of toxic in us. A hundred percent. We do. And hundred percent. I can be toxic. As I said, I've said it on the couch before. Yeah. I can be vicious. Right. I'm very, very feisty and yeah. I'm very, very, I can say things in the moment that I do not mean. And I said some really nasty things to Harrison and I will yeah. admit that, but it's, it's I'm not going to say that it's because of the environment entirely, but I've, don't think I've ever reacted that way. It's in crazy. A relationship ever. It's, it's no. It's crazy how the it just brings you. To, it, you this. It's obviously what they want to do on the show. They want to create a really heightened state for you. Yeah. And they want to scratch away at who you are. Mm-hmm. And I think some people don't know who they are underneath. Yeah. And it comes out. It's so um, true. And then they see it on television and they go, "Wow." Well, that was a bloody edit, and it's like. Dude, that's because you have an a, a that's because you have an, a perception of yourself that yeah. other people don't have. One hundred percent. And um, you know, we live have. in a democratic society where it's yeah. really, what is everybody else? What else? What energy are you putting onto everybody else? Mm-hmm. And so true. If it's everybody's problem, if it's everybody else's fault and never yours, mm-hmm. then it might be your fault. Yeah. We do a segment um, every week, and we call it "Am I the Tosser." Nice. Right, so people, cool. I've pe- seen it. Yeah, people, yep. people come in and they and they 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 um message in. Actually, they don't message in, and I've got something to say because somebody put in a review <gasps> saying they gave me one star and they said not genuine. He uses Reddit as the am I the tosser? It's like yeah, you idiot. <laughs> um, I 
Yeah, it's it's yeah. really hard to get content every week. Okay, you got to get inspo. And also, I like make up where they're from every week. It's so obvious. I'm like, oh, this is Bronson from Give Me a Suburb, and they'll say Ipswich, Ipswich, Bronson from Ipswich. If you think that that is not <laughs> irony, then you're dumb. Um. Anyway, so I am the tosser. Yeah, it's <laughs> It's a it's a great it's a great segment and we've actually got Bronson from Ipswich on on this one right here. Actually? Yeah, yeah, and he wants to know. He wants oh, to know. Okay. Okay. Yes. So he's he said, "Hey Ollie and Bronte. My hi Bronson. Uh, hi Bronson. My wife 37 female and I 38 male have three kids, 12, 10, and 8. She is in a constant state of overwhelm. And very easily irritated, constantly complaining how it's all too much. Mm -hmm. I'm, of course, happy to help and do my fair share for the kids or the household. But it's never enough because her standards are too damn high. She insists one of us has to be up at 6.45 every morning to make sure the kids are ready and make the bus which comes at 7.45. I told her they're old enough to not need that much help anyway. They can all dress themselves and pour themselves cereal and milk. There's no reason. There's no reason we have to be up. She says that cereal isn't good enough breakfast. They need something more substantial, especially the 12 year old and that 10 year old has ADHD and will definitely struggle without help in the morning. Mm -hmm. And anyway, she wants to see them off and kiss them goodbye for the day. So she gets up. I don't. Then she gets upset that I never give her a morning off when all she needs to do is just take the morning off when she wants and let the kids handle themselves. Also, she is super strict about screen time during the week and and is exhausted and snappy from arguing about it with the kids and upset I don't support a strict limit of two hours. I say as long as homework is done, why not until bed? She says it's not healthy for them. They need to play outside or with games and toys, read some books and just entertain themselves in more ways than one. I agree they should enjoy other things, but not seeing why we have to make such a rigid limit. She also likes to get out on weekends and do stuff like zoos, museums, but then complains about the planning for the outing and how grouchy the youngest gets by the end of it. And again, I say let's chill at home and voila, you've cut the work. I'm an engaged and active parent. I'm not trying to get out of it, but I don't think I should have to help my wife dig herself out of her own self-created holes. She creates the stress for herself and then turns to me to elevate it, which I think is unfair. Am I the tosser for telling her she needs to do less and she won't need this level of help? Mm. Dude. Mm. Dude. Mm. Bronson, my man. Bronson. Mm. He's being a bit of a toss. Yeah, just a little. All she's asking for is a little bit of emotional support. Right. That's what I'm getting from that. Mm. You know, it's, I mean, I don't have any kids. I don't have any kids. Yeah. I can't relate entirely. But she's just got a – for me, what I see is that she's got her own little schedule mm. and if she's getting up and doing this every single day and you're saying, oh, you can just take a morning off whenever you want. Yeah. Like she doesn't want to have to ask you to do that. As a woman, we want you to just do it. Like and if you're married, like I get it. No one can read minds, mm. but you should know by now, Bronson. Right. That's all she wants. Mm. So, like, at the end of the day, it'd be nice for you to just wake up one day and go, don't worry, babe, I've mm. got this. Look, I've got it. I can, I can, I can see, I think Bronson, he's going about it like a tosser. He's like, the, yeah. so if she wants to love her kids, There's let her love her kids. That. But I also can see Bronson's argument where he's like, you're so stressed. Yeah, we're, we're doing yeah, no, so. I get that. We're doing so much. Maybe not like if she wants to wake her up. If she wants to make her little ADHD kid breakfast in the morning. God knows we love it. I think that's adorable. I think that's that's lovely. But when it's like doing stuff on weekends, the, the zoos, museum, getting stressed about the planning, I feel like I can be a little bit Bronson with Tani. In obviously we don't have kids, but I feel like at times Tani's like, we got to fill up this. We got to fill up this cup. Yeah. Okay. And and. I'm like, let's not fill up the cup. Um, and because I know that the cup, filling up the cup is going to stress you out. Um, but I think. It's like a damned if you do and damned if you don't. Yeah. Situation. But I think I think with the kids, Bronson, like this is from his perspective as well. And he's yeah. like, these kids need 
help and I just think they shouldn't do it. I think it's just different parenting styles too. Very true. Like it's like what I'm getting from it is like I'm not going to sit here and slander him and say that he's all in the wrong. Mm. They both just need to have a little bit more communication with each other. Yeah. About, you know, and different love languages too. Get into therapy, you two. Therapy. God knows you therapy need it. Therapy is cool. Who doesn't need it? Okay. Definitely need it. <laughs> like- no. I mean, the both of us extensive <laughs> after what we've been doing. Um, okay. So number two, mm. am I the tosser? Mm-hmm. And this is John from... Johnny. John from Scarborough. Would you believe Scarb. he's actually in Scarborough? Oh, wow. That's crazy. Hi, neighbor. Hello. Okay. My son burps a lot while eating. I've tried to tell him... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Why he started off like that, Johnny? <laughs> Bloody hell, John, uh, stitched us up. No you're kidding. <laughs> All right. My son burps a lot while eating. I've tried to tell him multiple times, it's rude. I've told him to slow down so he doesn't swallow air with his food. I've told him that it is disgusting. My wife will instantly jump in and defend him. She will say, that's just the way he is and it's not his fault. The thing is, he can't control himself when I remind him. He just... <laughs> No, the thing is, he can control himself when I remind him. He just chooses not to. He went on a date with his girlfriend last night and she tore him a new asshole. It was his first time meeting her parents since they live in another city. Uh Uh-oh. They went out to a fancy restaurant and he burped all the way through supper. He came home almost in tears from her chewing him out for behaving like a jackass in front of her family. Okay. I heard him telling my wife about it and I laugh. She asked... What was so funny, and I reminded them both that I tried dozens, if not hundreds of times to teach him table manners, and he rejected them, and she protected him. I said, Mm. now you're a grown man, you have to learn the hard way. Mm -hmm. They both think she overreacted and that I'm a tosser for being amused by his experience. Damn. You know what? What you got? I hate it when people chew loud. Yeah. I hate it when people drink loud. Yeah. So I'm kind of on John Johnny's side here. Yeah, John ain't that. Yeah. John ain't the tosser, man. No. He's just having he's just he's, he's just having enough. jokes, he's man. Had, and he's had enough. Nah, sorry. I I'm old oh, mate. Yeah, Johnny, it's I quite literally Yeah. I feel myself mm. get enraged when right. somebody eats in front of me in like a terrible manner. It's just table etiquette. It's not hard. So I used to have a thing, right? I had a little bit of OCD as a kid. Yep, yep. And I'm like chaos. So the fact that I had OCD is just fucking bizarre. Like people still can't understand it. Um, uh-huh. And But I would have this thing where I don't care how anybody burped, but if they burped at the table, I could not finish the meal. Really? Ain't that weird? So you'd walk away? No, I don't. Oh, you just refuse to I'd eat? I'd say, <laughs> somebody burped, okay. Because I wanted to eat the... F- I just couldn't do it. Wow. It, I just... And what I was visualizing was yeah. the burp going... <laughs> into, my, into my food, man. Dude, oh. that's so funny. But yeah, I can kind of, I can understand. I used to give myself indigestion when my parents used to make us sit at the table because I hated the way that my dad ate. I feel like a dad thing. So you deliberately gave yourself indigestion? Yeah, so that I could eat and leave. Oh, so you would just like scoff it because yeah. you didn't want to. I wanted to eat. How does he eat? Like it just, you know, when they just can't, like they, they you know, when someone's chewing gum, like. Yeah, I do. That. Oh, I would absolutely have yeeted you off the. I, I swear, I almost threatened Harrison to yeet him off the balcony that many times. I was like, bro, if you chew your gum like that in front of me one more time, it's your head. If if it if it triggers me, and oh, sometimes can't. it does annoy me. Yuck. And it's like you can hear it I hate every it. second. Oh, I can't. I can't. I've been like, it says, Kira, my sister has it. My mum has it. We all have it. We stare my dad down. We're like, shut the fuck up. Like, I don't, so, know, I don't know how your dad became the tosser in this. But. Right. Sorry, dad. <laughs> sorry, Brian. I love you. You're, you're, you're a good egg, but control your bloody eating. Just like old mate Sonny. Yeah. See, I told you I'm not dramatic. <laughs> okay. Let's go to number three. Done. All right. Okay. So give me a name. A name? Any name? Yeah. Nick. Um, and give me a suburb. Why you got Nick on your mind, by the way? I have no idea. Oh, okay, <laughs> the first name that come to 
mine. I thought I was getting a little bit of There's no men. I, I promise there's no men. It's going to be all these Nicks coming in going, Nick. I'm Nick. <laughs> um, Nick from what? Per- a Perth stop anywhere? Yeah, go, go, go. Um, Nick from... Let's go. It's hard when you got to think of a it suburb, is. eh? It is. I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I'm Sorrento. Sorrento. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's Nick. Ever since we, 27, had a baby. They're both 27, I'm assuming. Okay. Okay. Yep. My wife had been talking like a baby herself. Rather than teaching the baby to talk like a person, it's as if my wife's language has become Baby like. Is this his first, their first baby? Uh, I haven't got that info. Oh, okay. I'm just going to assume it is. Okay. Okay. Yep. Sorry. It's vital. It's, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep. She would make noises in between. <laughs> she would make noises in between conversations like, booty, booty, chup. <laughs> and, and, a wa da da. Even when talking with adults. This is especially embarrassing when I'm with her in public places when she talks like that to complete strangers. I've been telling her nicely to not do that, but she would just laugh it off, totally oblivious to how people around us stare whenever she talks like a baby. I have to point out that she is not on the spectrum, (laughs) just a crazy new mum. In fact, too crazy sometimes. New (laughs) mum. It was... (laughs) It was a day off for us when we, have my, when we have my parents babysitting the baby and we finally have some time by ourselves. We went out for dinner and she done it again. Talking to the waiter, something like this. Yippee, thanks. Yeah, ha, ha. Oh, whoa, whoa, yeah, yeah. By the way, can you give us an extra plate for this? Is this satire? <laughs> Is this... <laughs> What? This can't be real. I refuse to believe this. There's just. There's no Who way. would ever do that? No one. Yippee, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, ha, ha. Oh, why, yeah, yeah. By the way, can you give us an extra play for this? <laughs> okay. What is happening? See? Okay. Seeing how the waiter's staring at her as if she's some kind of <laughs> mentally challenged. I rolled my eyes and told her, I'm taking a break today and I don't need another baby who could not even talk properly to look after. Please excuse me. Then I left the restaurant without her. I don't know what occurred to me, but I probably shouldn't have done that. But I guess I just kind of snapped. He just yeeted. He just, am I the tosser? No. No? No. (laughs) Okay. I I really, I can, uh, you know what? At the end of the day, one word is hormones. (laughs) I can't imagine what it's like to have a baby and then your hormones be going crazy, what, what not. I, I was willing to let it go if it was just to the baby. Right. But this is in public to a waiter. And there's no baby around. There, there's no excuse. <laughs> At least with the baby around, you can be like, oh, ba- baby. Okay. There's, there's, now, this is just, what? I no. will say this. I will say this. Leaving a restaurant is like... In the middle of a meal is a move. Like that only happens. Well, I mean, you've experienced first then, but it only. It only I've left many times. It, no, no, <laughs> when you're at that freaking beach bar with Harrison. Oh, oh mate left. Oh, I no, mean, he left. We, yeah. we, we kicked him out. Yeah. We're like, yeah. We've all been there. So, so, we've all been there. So, but it is like things have got to be tough when. Oh, so, <laughs> that's a very abrupt leave. I feel like. I mean, coming back to I've le- I left the dinner party table quite. A oh, few, that's true. I quite forgot a that, few times. That, that, that works to it as yes, well. Yes, and I think you know it's, it was actually called pulling a Bronte. Yeah. yeah? yeah, yeah. So when I have to remove myself from a situation, I'm done. So I yeah. can kind of understand that. Yeah. And I feel like he probably did that so that he didn't <laughs> didn't embarrass her yeah. while he's sitting there getting humiliated. Oh, poor bloke. Sorry, Nick. Like that's 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 tough, but I need to know if this is real because know. I'm really struggling. I don't know to believe this. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Bloody hell! Oh god! This is when I thought my life was a little bit hard. I listen to this. To be honest, like... I think I would find it hilarious <laughs> at this the way to going. Um. So anyway, would you like the lobster brisque? <laughs> <laughs> How would you even respond? Oh god! You'd have. Oh, I... 
dick. Yeah, look, okay. I don't blame him for leaving. Definitely no tosser. All right, no that's there. I'm the tosser. <laughs> that was great. That's one of my favourite ones. <laughs> okay, so we do another segment called yes. Hottie Hotline. Beautiful people asking beautiful questions. Nice. Now, I have someone, and I don't want you to get PTSD here, but it is Rupert. <laughs> oh, okay, Rupert. but this is he's 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 been very. You know, we felt so bad after that oh, whole thing. Oh, bless you guys. Like, we felt so bad. And it was like, I didn't Duh. I didn't really... So for people that don't know, um, what, the first clip we ever released on Tosser Clips, and it's been about 150 clips ever since then, um, was we thought it would be funny to prank call Bronte and ask if she wanted to be in a fake relationship um, on the show. And at the time, it was really funny. Um but then when it started getting time to when we were going to post it, we hadn't told Bronte. And you know when you don't tell someone and you consistently feel like you keep putting it off and you know you're going to do it, but you keep putting it off, you keep putting it off. We should have just done it straight away, but we felt awkward and that is our fault. So firstly, for the public to see, I want to apologize for that because no stress, doll. I understand that it was like, even though like it wasn't like we were – sorting particularly you out mm -hmm. we thought who does Ruby have a friendship with um and it just the other thing was we weren't expecting it to get have legs and then it started to really get legs so i do want to apologize for that no um, worries yeah water under the bridge doll yeah. you know i think to give a little bit of context to the people mm. is at that time i mm. was clickbait bronte mm. every headline Bronte, every photo, even if it didn't have anything to bloody do with me, mm. it was my photo. Mm. So I think I was just, and I'm sensitive. Yeah, who's I'm a, not? I'm a sensitive woman. I'm not even afraid to admit it. I mean, all I did was bloody cry yeah. the whole time. I cry every damn day. Yeah. But for me, I was just like, oh no. I was like, this is just going to, you know, my name and the word fake has just been right. Like basically, it was my identity there for a hot minute, and I know that you guys didn't do it maliciously, and I know that you guys weren't doing it for clickbait, but it's just. Oh no, we kind of did do it for the content <laughs> side of things. Like it's like. Oh, the, absolutely! Yeah. But in terms of like being like say daily, not not just Daily mm. Mail, but like all the articles, they do it because they know that. People yeah. are going to click on it. Yeah. And so, half the time you could be doing something as a joke, but the article will make it seem like so oh, serious. And they can twist it however they want. Yeah. So no, we're, no, we're, it's all good. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, that's a very roundabout to have Rupert styled in. <laughs> Sorry, Rupert. For, 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 <laughs> for, the, for the hottie hotline. Um, and he, just to let you know, he freaking thinks the sunshine comes out at your behind. That Does dude just. really? And that's, that's, he doesn't give that to a lot. So. Oh. What am I doing right now? I don't know what I'm doing. Mate, I'm playing Cupid. No, that's a joke. That's a joke. But anyway, <laughs> this is what he said. Hey, Bronte. It's Poops here. Um, I know you're a really good singer, so I would just like you <laughs> to finish the lyrics to this very famous song. La, 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 <laughs> la, 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 la. So where is it going? Where's, I can't get you out of my head. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, Kylie? Yeah, I go throw him under the bus here. He's like, I really just want Bronte to say she can't get me out of her head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what? I think of Roops a lot. Yeah. I do. I think. Look, I loved Roops. Still do. So one of the very few times that we ever all got to hang out off camera. Yep. Um, was the NRL game was on, right? Yep. There was an NRL game. I remember this. I'm a Scorpio, so I'm perceptive. You feel, you sway the room. I'm perceptive. Yep, feels. And I'm looking at, I'm just, you guys are just sitting next to each other and you're just having a little bit of a casual conversation. You just, <laughs> it's just, it's nothing. And to you, you're probably thinking, nobody's watching, nobody's, nobody can see no. that there's an energy test going on here. <laughs> And, oh, Lord. Okay. And then um, it's really interesting because then I think uh, maybe it was like as the show finished mm. and I I said... Was this when I was making fun of him for only having one tattoo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Which is like, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> um, read the room. Yeah. Read the room. Yeah. But then <laughs> I think he was saying something like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm just... Uh, I don't know. He, 
he insinuated that he maybe was talking to someone or maybe I said, I actually think I might have said it out of nowhere. I've just been like, you talking to Bronte? He's like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> um, and obviously you guys are just good friends, but yeah. like um, ever since I first saw you guys, there's always been an energy. And I've actually ever only ever seen you guys together that time yeah. hanging out. <laughs> but um, I don't know, you, you're both quite... Yeah, you're both similar, you know, in a way that we, you... We are. I always get asked, like, oh, who do you feel like you would have been really matched well with? And I always say Rupert. Mm. You know, he's very grounded. He's empathetic. He's got a big heart. He's hardworking. He doesn't have any... Hardworking. Hardworking. Oh, doesn't God. he have his own business or whatever? He wants to start his own business. <laughs> 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 no? What lies no? have you been speaking? Spinning Rupert. Well, this no, was a while sorry, sorry. ago, so maybe maybe he's changed his mind. But <laughs> it's he just was definitely the person that I feel like I could have, yeah, been matched well with. Yeah, and and this is what I'll say that um, people don't understand about Rupert is he is actually such an empathetic dude. He is, and he's got that energy where he reads people's comfortability and com- yes. and uncomfortability. And I don't even know if he does this deliberately, but he tries to make the other person feel okay. He, di- he did it to me. At, they didn't show it. Shock. At the last dinner party, and you know how I was sitting there and I was bawling my eyes out. Yeah. I was like, oh, I'm so done with this bloke. Harrison, no, not Harrison, Rupert basically said, he like literally shut everyone down. He goes, yeah, but Harrison, of course, Bronte's going to feel confident to speak. She's with her sister. Yeah. And I was like, Thank you. Yeah. Like you actually see me and you actually understand. Like yeah. that's what I needed was just my family. Yeah. And Harrison's like, mm, mm, you know, typical Harrison. But yeah, Roops and I, we I actually haven't that little shit. You need to call me. I've been telling you for a while. He doesn't answer my calls. Well, I'll tell you this. Yep. I think he's coming in the new year. To Perth. For the for for New Year's. Oh, he's coming for oh, he's actually coming this year. Yeah. Oh. So, so I, I'm really trying to get him there. So maybe we'll have to have a praise or something. Let's do it. Okay. So we end the show. That's right. Ending it. Can you believe? We're it's, done. Has it flown? It has. Like Time we've, flies we've when been, you're having fun. We've been going for an hour. Does that trip you out? It does. It actually has <laughs> gone really fast. Yeah. You know what? What can I say? Okay. So Good we chat. Yeah. Right? Love it. So we end the show with, we want to know your Uber score. Okay. Oh, what is my Uber score? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Okay. So I'll I'll show you how to get it. Okay. So how many trips have you done? I have done two thousand. No, no, no. No, I haven't. Two hundred and sixty-two trips. Okay. Two. I was like two (laughs) thousand. How old am I? (laughs) Now, how many Uber Eats have you got? Have you had? Oh my god! Where do I? You've chosen. It's like right there. Oh. Wow! It's always three hundred ninety-one. It's always bizarre when somebody has more Uber Look, Eats. There's a reason I'm single. <laughs> I don't cook. Yeah. Ever. Okay, and then you times it by the last two digits, which is of your rating, which is point five nine, right? Mm-hmm. So then that gets you your total. Oh. And. I know, smart. I, know, I know you're like, what the fuck even is this? Yeah, but no it's idea. like, it's like we just do this for everyone and they get a score. Okay. Is so it's like your own made up score. <laughs> Far out. <laughs> Why am I not uh, okay. shocked by this? Oh my God. Okay. So 492, you are coming last. Am I? Now the question is, and we're still trying to figure this out. Is last a good thing? Or is last a well, bad thing? Well, what's everyone else's? So I'm on about 800, 750. But what, what, is, what is the score for? Like, of, of, I'm confused. It's a made up it's score. It's a made up okay. But if we get enough people, well, then we'll have a tally. So it's your, it's your trips plus your Uber Eats times uh, by your rating. I feel like it, this could go one of two ways. Right. Is it bad or is it good? Like it could... Mm. Let's say bad because okay. I I'm terrible with the Uber Eats. Yeah, I, yeah, it's bad. No, I would say yeah. look, the lower score means that you have less activity. But then it's like I don't know if it's good or it's bad. But <laughs> we'll three hundred okay, three hundred ninety one may be the most Uber Eats. <laughs> it may be the most. I love to but, eat. But two sixty two, I think, might be the least amount of trips. Which is weird for Perth. I drive everywhere. Okay, I makes love sense. My car. Yeah, pay you- enough for it. All right. Well, Bronte Schofield, I really appreciate you coming on. I've had I've had a really good time. I think we um we covered a lot of bases. Um, Brilliant. And 
No, yeah. Thank you for coming on the the Tosser podcast. And is there anything you would like to say to the people playing along at home? Not really. (laughs) No, sorry. (laughs) Fuck you. No. Um, Thank you so much for coming on, Bronte Schofield. Thanks, guys. You've been watching the Ollie Skelton show that everybody rates. The acronym for that is Tosser. If you enjoyed the episode, you can rate it five stars on Spotify or Apple Podcast. Yes, please. Continue to do it as much as you can. Um, And we'll see you guys next week. All the best. God bless. Catch ya.